Hey folks, this is Anthony from FLX Adventures. It's December 17th, and that means it's only a few more months away to brown trout season. Um, for me, at least, April 1st. Some people start March 1st where the weather permits. Um, April 1st is typically when I start my um, fishing season. Um, and one of the best setups that we ran last year um, was on this Magna 20 DXT Pro um, running uh, our sequin, secret weapon rig. Say that five times really fast. So the SWR, or the 30-foot weighted steel, um, produced tons of fish for us last year. Um, it is a really solid way to get down maybe five or six feet in the water column, um, put it up behind the boards, or even better yet, put it 50 feet back um, on the downrigger. Um, we caught all types of fish. Um, brown trout, king salmon um, for the spring kings right towards the uh, end of April, um, and uh, even a bunch of uh, steelhead or rainbows, depending on what lake you're in. Um, this was great in Lake Ontario, obviously. Um, it was great in Canandaigua. Um, also really, really good um, in Cayuga. Um, we were there early spring in Cayuga fishing for browns, and we were getting all of these lakers in maybe 20 feet of water. So if you're fishing between like maybe 20, 15, even 10 feet of water, that skinny water, this will go down about five feet, maybe even six, depending on um, the speed of the boat. Um, so what is this reel and how do I set it up? So this Magna 20 DXT Pro, right? Um, it's level wind or it's eyelet here, isn't very wide. So, you know, when I'm using this weighted steel, which is a really, really good product from Torpedo um, Products, right? Their 40 pound, 45 pound weighted steel is very, very durable. Um, it does not, not, it, it does not, it, it's really good at not knotting. It's not even a thing. Um, but, you know, like opposed to like copper where you can get knots and tangles real easy, um, this stuff here, um, it's really hard to knot. So if you were to take this and tie an overhand knot and pull it, right? And then you can unpull it. You can see it's like, it's just super durable. If you did that with copper and pulled really tight, you're probably done. You have to cut it, snip it and whatnot. So um, this is a great product. I really like it. The only downside to it is terminating it can be a little problematic, especially working in a small reel like this. So one of the knots that I like to do is an Albright knot. And to do that, right, I'll use the weighted steel as the loop. I'll use the 65 pound Prower Pro as the um, wrap over. Um, and that seems to work really well. Um, I've also noticed that you really need 65 pound Prower Pro. Um, you can't use 40 when you're doing this. This it just it, it seems to me like it frays apart and it's not very durable. So like when you're doing your termination on these, right? If you're using that Albright knot like I use, um, and you know, 65 pound is the bare minimum. So 65 pound will go through the Magna 20 DXT eyelet and even um, some shrink tubing, right? And I'm gonna show that in the video upcoming, um, how I use the knot and the shrink tubing to make things all nice and neat and flow really easy through the eyelids. Um, so yeah, so that's this right here. Um, you can see this is about 85%, almost 90% full. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I know how much backing, how much core or weighted steel and how much leader to put on to make it um, 80%. Um, tangle Tackle Fishing, these guys are great. I watch their, their podcasts and their fishing um, reports all the time. Um, you search that and you search, um, he has a uh, search for um, spooling or line spool weight or, or something like that. I think it's, if you search on Google for Tangle Tackle Fishing and put line fill um, percentage, um, his Excel sheet will pop up, you can download it, you can put in your information, um, and, and I'm gonna show that and uh, later, and it'll tell you exactly how much of what to put on where. So all you really need to know is like the diameter of what you're putting on. So this weighted steel is 0.36. Um, the Power Pro I put on for backing is right here, that's 0.32. Um, and then they also have um, different weights for like, again, your 10 pound Fluoro has a very, very negligible 
um, diameter, but they have examples of what that is. And you plug it in and you say, basically you say, I want this 80% and it'll tell you exactly how much backing you have to put on. It's a great, great tool. Um, I use it pretty religiously. Um, I will post an image of that while I'm talking, um, when I'm editing the video. So what do I use for this, right? I got my 20 DXT. I have my torpedo weighted steel for the core. I got my 65 pound power pro for each end of the core or the weighted steel. I have my 10 pound for um, the leader. Uh, and again, I use 10 pounds. Some people will be like, that's pretty, that's not enough for Lake Ontario. I think it's fine for the Browns. It just depends on the setup you have and the fishermen you have. Um, running the boat. If I have some non-experienced folks, I might put on actually a 12 pound, but for me and my crew, 10 pounds. Um, and then I just have this 45 pound um, for the backing to fill it up, make sure that it's filled appropriately and working appropriately. So um, there you have it. Um, hopefully uh, you guys learned something from this and maybe, maybe you don't, maybe you think I'm crazy for some of the things I'm doing with uh, terminating the weighted steel, but last year again, it worked for me. I had no failures whatsoever. Caught some really good sized browns, um, some kings, um, steelhead. Uh, it was a great setup. And um, if you guys can um, follow along, maybe you can make one yourself. Thanks. To set up my uh, 30 foot of weighted steel line that uh, we have, we've had really, really good luck with last year on Lake Ontario and Canandaigua Lake, um, I have a just a nice small magda pro 20 dx uh okuma reel nothing fancy it has a line counter so it makes it easy to spool the reel um what else do i have <clears throat> i have some shrink tubing we'll get into that that's where i tie the braid to the weight or the the, the uh weighted steel i got my weighted steel all ready to go i got 60 pound 65 pound power pro um, and that's what i use to actually tie to my backing to the weighted steel um, and i have some on days um, 30 pound clear um, monofilament line and with that i'm going to use that a couple different places um, i have a few other things here too i have a glass of water so that's not to drink um, the glass of water is actually to um, cool off um, the shrink tubing after um, we warm it up to shrink it down. Um, and actually I have, if you see that here, I have a Spro, uh, a power swivel, a mini power swivel, a micro swivel. Um, some folks will use that actually over tying um, a knot um, to the end of their uh, um, weighted steel. Um, I will not. Um, I'll show you what the type of knot I use and whatnot. And the reason for that is, and actually I use these on my larger reels. So if I'm running like a 200, 300 copper or weighted steel, I usually have a di much different reel than this with much bigger eyelets. But when I'm using 30 feet, I, you know, I have a reel with smaller eyelets. And this is kind of a, an, an, this is a different approach to tying that knot, right? Because if you were to use this and you were going to use the shrink tubing, it would never fit through this eyelet while it was reeling in, right? It barely fits right now. So um, I'm going to show you a different way to do that. First thing we need to do, right? Spool the reel. The last thing you want to do is tie braid to the back end of your reel right as a backer to start because what happens if you get spooled you'll start getting slipping and slippage and mono tends to stick a little better and ties a little tighter knot so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pull out about 20 poles of mono give it a cut take this Put it through. I'm gonna put it down and around. And I'm just gonna tie two overhand knots. Pretty simple. Cinch that down. And then don't forget at the end here, 
tie two more overhand lats, but in line. So there's one. That's two. This is where the magic happens. So I got my two right there. And once I actually pull this, you'll see this cinched out on itself and lock itself in place. Tie really tight, tight. Look at that, it won't even move. All right, it'll cinch right down on that. Make it really nice and tight. Pull this through, clip off the remaining. Lock that in. Reel it in. Oh, went just a tad too far. And it spun out on me. Well, that's no fun. Let's fix that. Put it through the eyelet. And I got all that loose stuff. I got to re-spool that just a little bit. There we go. All right, so now I got the reel back here. I'm not done with this yet, Hondes. So I got that, and now I want to put the backing on. So let's do some math, and this is really interesting. So, oh, I let it go again. Let's pull there and tighten Reel it in. I'll do that after. So one of the things that's really important is I have a line counter reel, which is great. That allows me to know exactly how much line to put on the reel. I like to do 85, 80 to 85% full. This way, if I reel really something in and I get a knot. Oh, excuse me. So if I'm reeling something in and I get a knot, um, it leaves me some room in here for like disaster if someone reels in and things aren't quite right. So about 80%. And if you check out the Tangled, Tang Tangled Tackle website, they have an actual Excel sheet that will do your line, line counting for you. You put in your diameter, your line, your copper. So like you're basically you put in the backing diameter, the core diameter, the leader diameter, right? You put in how much core you want in yards and it'll tell you exactly how to fill. So for this reel, the Magna 20 Pro DX2, I if I'm using... Let's see here. If I'm using 30 pound Power Pro as the back, if I'm right, and that is a backing has um, about 0.12 diameter, and then for my core or my weight has 0.36, right? So that is listed here, right? You can see where it says 0.36, but that diameter, and then my leader. Um, and this is for brown, spring brown, so I'm only using 10 pounds, right? That's a 0 0.011 diameter. I plug all that in. It tells me that I need 200 yards of backing to make, and with my 100-foot leader and my 10 yards or my 30 feet of core to give me 80%. So that's what I'm going to tackle, right? Um, and then from there, right, that and that 100 yards takes into this math here. So we're going to take that 100 yard leader and break it out here, right? So I want specifically, right, 100 yards behind the board, right? That's really important to me, right? So I'm going to include that 30 feet, 50 pound of fluoro, 50 feet of 10 pound floor and 20 foot of braid. So I'm going to include that all in there. Um, and now that I'm like 80%, it actually makes it real easy for me to add on from the weight line back from the board, right, all the way back to the bait, right? So here's the board, right? I'll show you this again later. This is an Opti Tackle board. Um, got turned on to that by watching a bunch of Bill Safe videos, um, Safe Charter Fleet. They do spring browns, 
um, right here on the south shore of uh, Lake Ontario, which is pretty cool in the early spring. Um, love to follow them. There's a couple different knots you can tie here when I'm tying my mono backing to my braid backing. And one of those is an Elbright knot, which is good. Um, I, you know, if you're using material or lines of different diameter, that tends to work. Um, but um, what I would rather do here and what I have more confidence is, especially here in the backing, um, I want to use um, a double uni knot. So let me show you how that works. I've done it a bunch. So I'm going to take this line. I'm going to hold these two lines together. I'm going to hold the tip of this line and kind of just create a little arc, a little circle. And then I'm going to wrap it on top of both of the lines that I wrap it on. And for this one, I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to pull it. It's just like that. Now, this is this mono knot doesn't like to cinch down as much, but it will cinch down when I pull it. So you can see that is like that, and then I can easily slide that over. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to hold these two together. I'm going to create a little circle. I'm going to go behind it. I'm going to wrap. Now, Braid loves this knot, and it's real malleable. So I'm going to do this like eight times. So see here it's three it's four five six seven eight then i'm going to pull that now one of the things you want to make sure is that it doesn't bunch up when you're pulling it so i always kind of like to pull it and then give it a little pull out pull it like that and pull it and then you can see right here, it just wraps really, really nice around the mono. And from then to, they'll cinch right on top of each other. You can see them go right on top of each other. And then they'll pull tight. And then I like to give the tag ends just a little bit of pull on each of those. You can see... What a nice knot that is. Mm, masterpiece. All right. So let's take off the, trim off the tag ends of these. I always like to leave a little bit for stretching. I've seen them stretch just a tad on the mono, not so much on the braid, but I'm going to leave a little bit of tag on each of these. Just like that. Then you have a really nice, super strong knot cinched on itself. All right, now to reel this in, I'm going to pull this out just a little bit because there's a little slack brewing. There we go. All right. So from there, according to my calculations on the Tangle Taggle line spooler app, the Excel sheet, um, I need 200 yards or 600 feet of backing to fill this up at 80%. So that means that this spool should be at 400 when I'm done. Let's check it out. Enjoy this, and I'll do this in fast motion to make it a lot easier for you guys. Keeping close. All right. So that started at a thousand. Now that's four hundred. That's six hundred feet or two hundred yards. All right. That's excellent. So 
I'll give myself a trim here. There we go. And next, we'll move on to tying this up to the weighted steel. All right, now that I have the backing on, um, and I didn't want to bore you with that, but I have another uni knot. Let's see if I can get that in focus. There she is. I have another uni knot where I am tying up some mono to braid. You may be asking why I do that. I prefer clipping the board on mono. I feel like it sticks better. I get less slippage. And it actually, when I make a nice little turn and put it in the, 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 the holder of the board, when there's a release, I feel like it releases better too, right? So um, I put in about um, five feet of that, and I'm gonna reel that in. So now we're working on the business end, right? I want 20 feet of braid, 50 feet of fluoro, right? Um, and 30 feet of weighted steel. So right? The braid goes first, weighted steel, and then leader. I'm going to show you how I do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is tie the braid here that's going to be in the water to the mono that I just put on that I'm going to attach to the board. So six loops. That's two, three, six. Give it a nice pull. There we go. Excellent. Make sure it still pulls and sliding on that. It is doing a good job. Do the same thing over here. And I'll tell you. Having this, if you see that, having this spooler makes this job so much easier than having spools just laying around the workbench. Um, keeping things nice and taut on both ends makes it real easy to tie these knots. So this is an eight, so it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Give it a pull. Make sure it doesn't bunch too much. There we go. Crimp, I'll slide these together. And they create a really nice knot between the two. And then I'm going to crimp off the ends here. All right. Bring that in. So here I am, and again, right, I know I need 20 feet of braid. Pretty simple, right? 20 feet of braid, then 30 feet of weight, and then 10 pound of fluoro. So let's do the 20 feet of braid. That means that I should be down to 980. Nope, that's incorrect. No, that is correct. 980. Alright, that's 980, so that's 20 feet. Let's give it a clip. Alright. So the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to start getting into putting on the weighted steel onto the braid. Now, weighted steel is interesting. And it is, I mean, it is a great product, right? Like, I can't tell you how many tangles that I've gotten that I've been easily been able to untangle using weighted steel. It's super forgivable, user-friendly, and easier to get into than copper. Copper's super soft. You get a knot or a kink on that, and you, it, it's over. You need to replace it. Or if you get a knot, you're just cutting it out. With weighted steel, super forgivable. But with that forgiveness comes trade-offs, like anything else. And terminating to this is a pain in the buttocks. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Again, I think I went over a couple of those at the beginning, but using like a Spro and using um, sheet shrink 
um, overhand knots, but if you have a, a, a reel like mine that has a small level lined eyelet, right? There's no way that you're getting spurs in there. So what do you do? Well, you can tie um, different knots to this. And one of the ones you can tie is an Elbright knot. Now Elbright knots are really interesting. Um, but one of the things I've noticed right away is that, um, unfortunately, 40 pound or, or even 30 pound Power Pro doesn't really last long on here. Um, you probably get away using it for like half a year. So if it's just the brown season, that's fine. But I've noticed that the heavier the, the braid, the better it connects and the longer it lasts. So um, what I'm probably going to do, as I am going to do, is I'm going to take just a piece off of here. I'm going to tie it on using a double uni. And then I'm going to take the other end and use an Elbright knot and tie it here. So let me show you how that's done. All right, folks. So um, I've tied a double uni knot here. Um, from the 60 pound to the 35 or 40 pound Power Pro, it's 40 pound. And I'm now going to tie an Albright knot to Power Pro to the weighted steel. And again, the reason I do that over using a Spro is um, the reels that I have that I fish for Browns and I like to fish for Browns, the light tackle, it's a Magda 20 DX2, not a very expensive reel, an easy reel to get into, super accessible for everybody. Um, and this knot will allow it to go through the eyelets of the level wind, um, it will, right? And a Spro just won't, you're just never gonna get one through. So the first thing you need to do is take your shrink tubing, cut it, well, cut it maybe an inch, maybe a little less, throw it on the braid side. We'll use that later, but you wanna put it on before you tie the knot. And I really, I like to tie eyebright, eyebrights a certain way. Um, I like to tie them this way, going left, my left to right. So I'm gonna do it that way. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hold that. I'll just bend it a little bit, just like that. And then I'm gonna take braid put it over here and what you do it's been a while since i've tied this one so i tied them all last spring see if i can remember how to do it so what you do is you want to go underneath and then you want to pull it through and then pinch it so i got an underneath and then i'm pinching it here and what you want to do is you want to keep that here and you want to wrap it back up on itself um say about i don't know um eight or nine or ten wraps and then when you come back the last time you want to come back up here so i've gone up and then you want to come over the top and go down so then you have actually you know you want to go up so you want to come on and you want to come up so you have one on the down and one on the up and then it'll cinch down on itself and it creates a nice knot so let's try this one it's two it's three four five six seven, eight, nine, and there's 10. And again, it's on the down. So I want to come out on the up, just like that. And give it a pull. You can kind of see as I pull that, it's kind of cinching down on itself. really nice super tight knot you want to pull it down as much as you can there you go so if you look real close right i've tied that knot create a really nice connector so i want to trim some of this tag on but not too much because i have my little secret of what i'm going to do with that and i'm going to clip it about oh say maybe an inch down And then for that piece here, this tag end, same thing, do about an inch down. So you wanna do less than an inch because you really want to make it so your shrink tubing can cover most of the knot, but all of the tag of the weighted steel. So nice here, that looks about right. 
tap. So right here, you got a really nice, super tight line, right? Um, so I want to take this piece here, just bring it over, bend it down. And I want to put my seething heat shrink tubing, bring it all the way back up here, go over this knot. that kind of see going over I'm gonna pull this over all right you kind of want to go right about on top of it and then you're done right so right there that'll go through your eyelid which is great now there's some debate here I get this a lot what I do is I want to heat this part up but I don't want to heat this part up Right, so I don't want to shrink that too much. I want to be very gentle because I don't want to burn the braid, but I do want to shrink this down here. So, right, so it shrinks down. It keeps all my for um, all my tag ends and all nice together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my lighter and I got my cup, Ooh, my pad. My wife wouldn't like it. I'm sure. I started the house on fire nor would I. So I have this. You can see it nice and shrinking. All right. Kind of the same thing here. Get this out of the way. You can see the heat sheet shrinking. Then put in the water here, let it cool down. Let's see what we got here. It's a pretty nice connector with some tubing that sits down. It's going to keep all of your stuff here nice and neat. All right, kind of protecting the knot, also kind of protecting itself. Um, now, and I don't, I personally don't believe it did any damage to the braid um, by that. And then, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit more heat, get that shrink tubing just a little bit more, and then get that in the water real quick. Oops. Now one of the lures wants to go swimming early. I have that really nice um, shrink tube knot. All nice and protected. Very really nice used in Albright knot. Connect these two together. And again, I'm going to show you. It goes right through that eyelet. Um, if you want to know what size I'm using for this, um, this is a 332, 364 shrink tubing, 24 AWG. This works really well for, well for this application. Um, when I'm using um, more... When I'm using bigger reels, bigger eyelets with more weighted steel, I'm definitely going to be using way more, um, a bigger size than this, but this works really well. So again, right, so this is going to be here. So as you can see, it goes really nice through onto the reel. And I want 30 feet of this, so let's do that. So from 30, I should be at 70 on the counter. Oh, let me take my holder off here. There we go. All right. Let me turn right on the... All right. That's my 30 right there of weighted steel. So I want to make sure I cut that here. And pull this out. Let me make sure I got enough. Now, one of the things is weighted steel will also kind of loosen up on you if you don't keep tension on it. So for me, I want to make sure I keep some tension on it. So I'm going to put this these pair of clippers just on it so it doesn't unravel here. 
on me. So the next step here is just like the other end, right? Um, I want to take my shrink tubing, make sure it's on the line. I want to get here a good section of 60 pound power pro mm -hmm. here. I want to make, and I, what I want to do is I want to tie an L right knot, just like I did before. No difference. So I'm going to turn this, make a loop, sprint it down a little bit. I'm going to go under and pull it with my thumb, lock it in. And I'm going to do 10 wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's on the bottom. It came out on the bottom loop, so I'm going to go on the up loop, put it through. Let's see. Not cooperating, there you go. Then pull this down, make it nice and tight. Sometimes I like to use gloves on these when I'm pulling them nice and tight because um, you can definitely burn some skin on that. I've done it. So I have this nice knot right here. I'm going to clip just a little bit off here but leave more than normal so I can roll it over and then I'm going to do the same thing here about there all right I'm gonna go get my sheathing right there Shrink tubing, put that over the tag end here. I want to tuck that in too, together. Just like that. Push that shrink tubing right over that knot. Just like that. Just like that. Stuck it right in there. Stretch it out. I'm telling you this is this size is great. All right, and then I want to, again, put this over here. I'm gonna shrink down this end a lot. All right. All right. Shrink that down real nice. It shrunk there pretty good too. All right. I used to have a heat gun that I liked. I don't know where it went. I'm pretty sure um, I may have misplaced it. Heat gun works just as well, um, if not better, honestly. Um, works better with braid, right? Puts heat on, it shrinks the, sink, the shrink tubing. Um, but it doesn't really cause any damage to the braid. And again, I don't think I'm causing any damage to the braid here. I haven't run into any of those issues. Um, shrink tubing this down, cinching it down here. All right. So there you have it. And we'll take that, tie that in, bring it right in there, right through that eyelet. No problem going in and out of that eyelet. All right. From there, um, pretty simple knot. We're going to take this and we're going to tie this to the 10 pound leader. Um, and we need, according to my math, uh, we need 50 foot. So I have my Seagar Invisix 10 pound. So I have my Okuma Magda Pro 20 DXT here, right? Um, I went through all of the um, lines um, for you. So um, I did my backing, which is 40 pound Power Pro. 
right? That is 400 or 600, sorry, feet or 200 yards. I have uh, 30 feet of weighted steel. So that's the 45 pound torpedo weighted steel. I have my Invisix 10 pound Seaguar for my, there it is, for my leader. I have um, 20 feet of 30 pound or 40 pound Power Pro um, for kind of the filler for the leader. Um, I probably could have just done the whole thing mono if I wanted to, um, but it's kind of how I like to run it. And in between on each end of the weighted steel, right, I have um, some 65 pound uh, Power Pro. And, and the reason for that, again, is I, I feel that Power Pro braid doesn't really hold up very well with their knots on weighted steel um, with the Albright knot, unless you're really using um, like a 65 pound or higher. Um, otherwise, I feel like they, they get a little crazy. Um, they kind of like fray out a little bit um, over time. And I want to kind of use these as much as, as much as I can. I'd love to use them all year if I could, um, especially this one. This is a hot rod. This is, this is my SWR, as I call it. And um, it was really, really good to us. We caught a ton of fish off it this year. And um, hopefully um, you can get some tips from how I did it. And uh, you could uh, have a really hot season just like we did last year. Um, thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe um, for some more videos and some more content. Um, again, uh, I'll be putting together a bunch more lines. Um, I'll probably be doing a copper um, I'll be doing some longer weighted steels. Um, I got to do four more um, just regular lines um, that I use for spring browns. Um, and I'll talk about those and how I set those up as well. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe.